Chris, say something inspirational. Uh, hope you're ready for an adventure. Or I could just quote from extraterrestrial, prepare to be amazed by an unexpected encounter. Waka waka, waka waka waka, this way, damn it! Waka <laughs> Hello and welcome everyone to the Del Mar Show. 2017 was a fantastic year for me. It was the year that we, me and my brother got to move out into this lovely apartment here. Uh, I changed so much as a person and I really strengthened up my confidence of all. But one of the things that really, that I remember so much when you came back in 2017 was it was my very first time going to an anime convention, which was MTAC. This was located in Nashville and it was such a fun time. I have never been to an anime convention before and this was my first time there and it was incredible. I got so many great merchandise from it. There were so many wonderful talented cosplayers there. Plus being able to meet little Karibo and Marie and was nice enough. Actually that was very hard beating for me because I never met another celebrity before so it's like I had shivers throughout the entire time going to his late night panel but it was so much fun there, MTAC. But one of the things that I remember after MTAC that always plays back in my mind is I have two friends. One of them is in this video here. Both my friends, they love going to conventions. They go to about three to four conventions every year, I believe. I think three to four, it could be more, I'm not sure. But they have told me many times that once I go to one anime convention or just a convention in general, you just want to go to more. They are true. Even after we got back from MTAC, I just want to go back to another convention. Granted, my wallet is currently mad at me for spending way more than I should have been spending, but it's like, screw the expense, it was so much fun and I wanted to go to another convention, but I didn't know how. There's so many different conventions that pops up all over the country that it gets so overwhelming to which one you really want to go. I will say I want to go to MTAC. Uh, this year, but sadly I didn't get to, plus the guest list didn't really change that much, even though they had Terra Pratt there. And other than that, I didn't know which convention to really go to next. That was until one of my good friends, Stug, who goes to conventions a lot, you've seen him in a few of my videos many times, he mentioned to me about a convention in Knoxville called Fanboy Expo. And this one is not really anime convention, it's more of a North American pop culture, sure there was some anime merchandise in there, but it was all focused on American pop culture and all that. They had like a sp guests from Star Wars, Buffy the Fa Vampire Slayer, uh, two of the Backstreet Boys there and all that. I didn't know if they really want to go. That was until he mentioned that Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario, Luigi, and many others was going to be there. I was sold. He sold me to go in there. And this was back in early January of this year. And as months went on up to Fanboy Expo's uh, dates. There was more awesome guests there. Uh, they had two other guests that I really want to meet, which I'll get into here in a bit. And yeah, we went for one day, we went Saturday, to the Knoxville Comic Con 2018 or Fanboy Expo. Now granted, I am not an expert in conventions yet. I'm still a newbie, and I was still getting butterflies whenever I saw awesome cosplayers and guests and seeing all of this geekdom in front of me. But I have to say, it was an incredible time. I loved the Fanboy Expo. Sure, we only stayed for one day, Saturday, but it was worth it. There was so much stuff. Uh, I get overwhelmed talking about it because there's so much to really say, but it was so much fun going over to Fanboy Expo. It really was. And the experience there was a little bit different than it was in MTAC. Maybe a little bit better, even though. I'll still remember MTAC as a great convention, but then again, I think everyone's first convention is always going to be in the mind for fantastic, most of the time at least. But anyway, it was me and my brother and Doug that went over there. We was going to have one other person, but Sally couldn't make it with us. And then the convention itself was just fantastic. Everyone there that helped kept the lines orderly, helped the tickets and everything, were really friendly. They were able to help answer questions because there were so many different lines that was like which line do we go into they were very easy to get along with one other thing that 
I really noticed a major difference in this one was that the convention was held in the Knoxville Convention Center. It's right next to where the Sun Sphere is at over there. One of the things that really struck me all about that was there was much more room. Back at MTAC, it was all in one hotel. Like the artist alley and all the dealers and some of the panels. It was all like one hotel room and it got kind of claustrophobic at times. Heck, I remember it was in actually two separate locations. One which was the artist alley dealers room. And then there was another location, I think it was like across the street, I'm not sure, I can't remember. That had like some of the guests that you can sign. A uh, video game place where you could do tournaments and all that but here it was all in one location and even though there was a lot of people it didn't feel nearly as claustrophobic as it was over an MTAC but then again it was in a much bigger facility I did notice however that after over an hour of us being in there it got really stuffy like the, it was very humid over there then again I don't think there's like air conditioning units in this convention center so I felt really humid at times but the overall enjoyment definitely overtook the humidity of the location it was fun getting seen so many talented cosplayers there was like a whole lot of them that you did really cool i'm not a cosplay person because do i look like i can dress up like floyd pepper or ministry of silly walks actually that's not a bad idea i could i could do that but i love seeing a lot of talented cosplayers i try to take most of the pictures in of people that i recognize that's like oh my gosh you're wario i want to take a picture and all that and it was fun getting to take the pictures with all of them being able to see some really awesome stuff like we saw bb8 actually being active over in the convention center that was really cool to see it up close plus they also have a few display standees like they had the original AT fam there. Uh, they also have one of the vehicles from Rogue One, I believe, which you're really impressive in person. But at last, I have to talk about the guest. As I mentioned, there was Charles Martinet that made me want to go immediately, but there was a few other guests as well that I actually get, had a wonderful privilege to actually speak to for a little bit. And I'm going to go by order here. And there's also one guest that I didn't really want to meet. It was for a friend, but Again, I'll say I always get close by. The first person that we got to meet was Steve Whitmire. It was incredible to see a main Muppet performer there. And it was so great talking to him. He did have a Q&A panel there. I sadly didn't get to go to it. But I decided to ask him because the line was short. And he was very friendly and uh, really engaging to talk to. One of the things I asked him about was his performance for Waldo. For those who don't know, Waldo is a CGI puppet that appeared in the Jim Henson Hour, but most notably in the Muppet Vision 3D attraction in Walt Disney World. And the way the puppet worked was a little bit different because it was a computer character, not an actual puppet you could hold, but rather there was like this little, um, kind of like a weird puppet uh, auction like thing, uh, similar to how Jerry Nelson and the others before the G Gorgs over in Fraggle Rock, where he can move his hand up and down to make Waldo turn. One of the things I asked him about it, was what was it like, because I imagine performing a CGI character, but like in a puppet form, it's very difficult. And he had, and he told me that he had to use his imagination to what the character would look like, because at the time, they didn't finish the Waldo model, rather you only saw the skeleton keyframe of what Waldo could look like. This is like the pre-version before they make the shapes of it, so he had to use his imagination. But he said there was a really unique ex experience. I just thought that was incredible getting to ask him because not a whole lot of people really talk about Waldo. He's like an obscure Muppet character at this point. Plus, literally after seeing Steve with my eye, fainted. Okay, not really, I didn't faint it, but I, it was just incredible getting to meet him. Uh, just to see this wonderful Muppet performer who took the legacy of Kermit. Like, I couldn't imagine what it would be like when... After Jim Henson's passing, he had to literally be the next performer to perform Kermit. I think that was extremely hard on him to do, and he's just done a fantastic job. And then the next person we met was Charles Martinet, the person that made me want to go to Fanboy Expo. You guys know I love Mario, I love his games, he's like my all-time favorite video game franchise, and being able to meet the voice of Mario in person was another thing of butterflies. I was shaking. And the funny thing was, Doug was lost in the expo, 
uh, but I have my brother Chris in, and he hasn't really played a Mario game in years. Yes, he has played Mario 64 and a few others, but not as much. So he's not really like, he's more like a casual fan of Mario per se, but he was getting butterflies as well, and I think everyone does. Like, even if you only played one Mario game your whole life, just being able to meet the voice of Mario, Luigi, Wario, Waluigi, and all the others would be very daunting a bit. He's like one of the first video game voices for many of us gamers, and he's just an icon. And it was incredible getting the chance to meet him. I was originally just going to have a photograph of him, but I decided to quote from my friend Doug, Damn the expense, I decided to go ahead and get an autograph from him. I love Mario Kart 8, and I do not have a poster of him. They had a Mario Kart 8 poster hung next to his picture. It's like, oh, I wouldn't like that. And Charles Monade got to sign it. And I think what was really cool was that, you know, some people may get the idea that a voice actor doesn't do the voice all the time uh, when they're off work or something. This is none the case. When he was signing Mario, he did the whole Mario voice saying, Super Daniel! By the way, that. I had goosebumps there. And then he also did a little signature for Luigi. Uh, upside down on the post and signed that. That was just really cool. And one of the things that uh, <laughs> was funny too, I actually caught it with one of my uh, friends over there pretty late. Uh, he had his kid go over to meet Charles Monet and he had him sign a picture of him with all the different characters and he did each character's individual voice and I think that was awesome. And me and Chris got to do three different picture poses with him. He was such, it was awesome. And one of the most awesome things is that even though he's, I think he's like in his early 60s or something, I may be wrong, but he's so lively, like, doing all the different voices and all that, he was so alive, and I think for a talented voice actor to play one of the most iconic characters in gaming, it's just an incredible experience. And then one of the guests that I really wanted to meet was Bill Farmer, who's the voice of Goofy, Pluto, he also voiced Farcorn Lakecorn in a couple of the New Tunes cartoons, when we got to meet Bill Farmer, he actually did his goofy, goofy voice first. And then I mentioned I love his Farcon Leco voice. And the best part he did, and he even mentioned the first little Looney Tunes project he mentioned with Farcon Leco was Looney Tunes Space Race. And to see him mention that first, it's like, Space Race 2, Space Race 2, I would love that. Seriously, I would love to see another Looney Tunes Space Race game. My brother asked him a question. And it's not Kingdom Hearts, trust me it's not. Uh, he actually asked him, since he does voices for Disney and Warner Brothers, which one he did prefer. No surprise, Bill Farmer, he mentioned that he loved working with Disney more, because they were more like a family. Unlike with Warner Brothers, they just treat their employees fine or decently, you know, don't really hang out with them or go to their houses to visit. But with Disney, he felt more like family. In fact, the saying that he mentioned that I will that I didn't realize until now was that Warner Brothers has a very off-track key of who's the current voice for Bugs, Daffy, and so many others. They kind of change voices time to time. Like in Back in Action, Jim Cummings, who's usually the voice of Taz, didn't voice Taz in Back in Action. It was Brendan Fraser who did Willie. That gum good job voicing Taz is. I didn't even realize it was Brendan Fraser. But yeah, it kind of made me realize that they have a very off-track key of who's the current voice for Bugs and Daffy and all the other Looney Tunes characters. So I can imagine that idea of how Warner Bros. not saying they don't treat their employees horrible, but don't have a deeper connection unlike Disney, who wanted to keep the current voice the same throughout the whole time. Like, if it's Goofy, get Bill Farmer. If it's Mickey, get Brent Ivan to do Mickey's voice. So it's one of those things that, from his perspective, I can understand a bit. But then there was one other guest, and I didn't really want to meet this person. Uh, not that I don't hate the, the, her anything, I'm just not unfamiliar with her work. But uh, one of my good friends, Tyler, oh, goth bat, dead face uh, in my videos, wanted me to get an autographed picture of Elvira, the Mistress of Darkness. I know nothing about Elvira. Uh, I know that she's a huge pop culture icon to many people. I'm just unfamiliar with her work and all that. But he asked me to get an autograph of her book, which, uh, yeah, just it's called Elvira, Mistress of Darkness. Get a signature of her book and everything. He gave me money, of course, and I, I don't mind. I don't mind helping out my friends one bit. 
but man, was it exhausting. Okay, so pretty much, there was two main guests there that had pretty long lines. One was Peter Cullen, the voice of Optimus Prime, and then Elvira. I literally waited in line to get my friend a signature of the book for an hour and a half. I'm dead serious. And normally I think, okay, yeah, I, it's kind of wasting my time a bit, but it's for a good friend. But still, the thing about the line, it was really painful as well. Not because I had an annoying person coming to me or anything, but like, waiting in line was very hard because I did not have Chris or Doug with me. Chris was on his mission to find Doug somewhere in the convention, so I was by myself, I had no one to talk to. And the, the thing that I'm confused about was that as the line kind of fell along, my back started hurting. And I was just standing in line. I'm sure it's, there's someone saying, yeah, standing for a long time will hurt, but I wasn't carrying like any heavy luggage or anything. I had a bag to put my stuff in, but I, it was just weird that my back started hurting. I had to hunch over a couple times. It was painful, but it was worth it. I was glad I was able to help my friend Tyler out to get her to sign the book. One other note I want to say, uh, if somehow I wasn't able to get Elvira's autograph, me and my brother was just going to get Deadpool's picture there. So it's like, well, it'll be a win-win scenario or something. And now it's time to talk about the little knickknacks that I got throughout the entire convention. Um, first off, I want to talk about some games. I didn't get a whole lot, uh, but I got in two games, which is Dr. Mario for the original NES, and then Maui Mowered in Cold Shower, 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 Shadow, excuse my French. This game, I've heard a lot of great things about people. They say uh, Maui Mowered is a really fantastic platformer on the Super Nintendo, and I'm really excited to play it out. I think it might be pretty interesting. I also got a couple of pop figures. One is Uncle Traveling Matt from Fraggle Rock. I was really happy to get him. I sadly could not find Sprocket at the convention. I really would like to get Sprocket, he was one of my favorite characters on the show. Uh, and I would like to get all the other Fraggles as well, but sadly I couldn't find Sprocket there. And then uh, my brother actually found this one here, and there's a funny story to it. I love Robin Hood, that's like my all time, one of my all time favorite animated Disney movies. And Pop released three characters from Robin Hood. One is Robin Hood obviously, I showcased him in one of my videos. They also have Prince John, which is sadly getting more expensive as time goes on. And then my brother found Sir Hiss in one of the booths. He, uh, he's not like in perfect condition, there's a few couple scratches around his head, but for five bucks, which I know a lot of people, uh, like online has been selling for a little bit over that, it's really good. Then again, I'm not really a huge pop collector, so as long as I get the character and he is in good condition overall, that makes me so happy. And then finally, we got pillows for decoration. This is my brother's pillow that he found of all the Sony characters. And then this is my pillow that has some Nintendo characters. Don't ask why Mega Man is on there, even though he's not a strict Nintendo person. Actually, speaking of the pillows, uh, they feel great. They feel spectacular. And judging by the vendor, he says that the pillows are too good. Let me explain. Um, he has this one customer that comes in and sells stuff in conventions all the time and they have to sit in those really uncomfortable chairs so they will always have a cushion to sit on and after two years of purchasing that pillow they still say it's soft and the <laughs> it was funny too because the guy was like that's bad because the pillows are so good that I can't give you you can't buy more from me and stuff so he was really awesome to talk to but yeah the pillows they feel really soft and plus they just look really good decorations. I'm really happy that me and Chris stumbled upon them. They look really nice. And then there was a couple other little knickknacks I got. Well, not really knickknacks, but these I really like. First, I want to talk about these fridge magnets. They have fridge magnets going on there. And there was a special sale that if you bought four, you got them all for $10. I got two for me and two for Chris. You can probably tell who's is who's, judging by the franchises. And then we also went by to the artist alley. This is actually one of my favorite parts, seeing different people drawing different stuff and combining different franchises. I found this awesome one that we are hanging strictly for Christmas. Uh, it is of uh, the Grinch, the Jim Carrey version. Wow, that light is really distracting. Oh, there it goes. 
It's of the Jim Carrey version of the Grinch with Jack Skeleton behind. And then finally, the last thing we got, and I want to say to this one particularly, there was this one artist, uh, her name's Caroline, but she does illustrations under the name Hidden Talent uh, Illustrations. She does fantastic work. I'm showing a few images here on the screen. But uh, we, me and uh, my brother got to talk to her a lot. She was so much fun to hang out with and uh, her artwork was fantastic. I got this one here of Choose Your Weapon that has different video game controllers there. One of the things that I didn't realize or I didn't really know is that some uh, artist people actually do commissions in the conventions. Normally I don't really want to do that considering I don't want to overstress the artist because I know they have to sell the art and then have other commissions and all that, but she was all up for it. She even suggested uh, submissions as well, when me and Chris didn't see a, a whole lot or anything that caught a major interest in. Uh, my brother fill, filled in a huge order uh, for her, but for me, I asked her to do something simple. So I asked her if she could draw Kampa for me. She's like one of my top five favorite characters, and she did. She drew this lovely image of Kampa and she looks amazing I have to say. She did a spot on job with this image. But yeah, I highly recommend going to check out Hidden Talent Illustrations. She's she's a fantastic artist. She had incredible drawings. She's really talented and she was so much fun to talk to. There was one illustration I saw that uh, really crushed me. Um, keep in mind, if you haven't seen Full Metal Alchemist, this is a Kind of a spoiler alert here, so you can skip to wherever the time code says here. There was an illustration she had of when that little girl got transmuted with the dog, which was one of the most saddest episodes ever in the anime. And there was the illustration she drew that had that along with uh, Felix Jr. from wreck Ralph saying, I can fix it and... That's just... That's just messed up, man. <laughs> I mean, wow, I'm sorry, just, I know some people like to make funny stuff, but that is just, <laughs> oh gosh, that was dark. Overall, I have to say, Fanboy Expo was incredible. Yes, we only stayed for one day, but it was worth it. Being able to see so many great people who I've wanted to meet, uh, just to say thank you for helping, inspiring, and keeping me happy throughout the years. Um, being able to see so many talented artists, cosplayers, and just being able to just be geek out all over all sorts of stuff. It was really incredible. I loved just being able to geek out and just feel happy that I could just talk, ramble about Mario, Neptuna, Muppets, Thomas the Tank Engine, all this stuff. It's just a fun time and it's really incredible. And if you haven't been to a, a convention yet, uh, trust me, it is an experience that is worth it. And granted, you at me, I'm 24, and this is my only, my second uh, convention going. So it may take a while, but I just love going to conventions. And hey, who knows? Hopefully I'll start tradition of going to one convention every year. Maybe go to two conventions next year, probably. I'm not sure. But still, it was such, it was so much fun. Though my back still hurts from the Elvira line. So, Tyler, if somehow you're watching this, you're welcome. But anyway, that's all the time we have for today, folks. So, if you would like to leave your thoughts in today's uh, episode, just comment below. If you were at Fanboy Expo or something in Knoxville, just say hi and all that. Um, plus, if you want me to go to more conventions and do more videos like this for the Del Mar Show, let me know. I'm really wanting to go to more conventions as long as my wallet will permit me to. I hope that she's not mad at me. But now, if you excuse me, I'm gonna take a towel now because my back just. <laughs>